Good Tuesday morning, everybody, live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, and things are looking quiet and dry for today. Maybe the possibility of an isolated thunderstorm coming up, but we're just not really seeing too much of anything uh, in the way of major amounts of problems for today. It is going to be on the hot side once again, so if you have any plans for outdoors, be prepared to be on the hot side there and get yourself a little bit more in the way of some water along with you just to be on the safe side. Again, steamy conditions for this time of the year is nothing that we are not used to, but it is something that you do need to consider and make certain that you are safe with. So just to be on the safe side with that for the latest portion of the day today. And if the kid's going to be out playing, doing anything out there, it is going to be necessary to make certain that you are prepared for that. Make certain nobody gets overheated. And don't forget the sunblock as well. Welcoming all of our Facebook viewers as well. We're live on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook for this morning. And if you are just joining us again, if you've never been here before, wreg.com slash weather is the main webpage to go to. Forecast information if you can't stick around for the entire thing right here in the blue bar scrolling on by social media information including my email address here up there and over there in the main graphic area so tons of information available for you if you'd like to check out all that currently in the mid-south again lots of clear blue skies little hazy some patchy fog out across the area but just not seeing a lot of anything major taking place in the way of visibility problems some fog in some locations but beyond that we just don't really see a lot of anything going on. Radar at this time, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We've switched over to the velocity mode. There are times to where the radar beam can be deflected by portions of the atmosphere and go back down toward the ground. The colors that you're seeing, that blue line right in the middle of the screen right there is I-40 between West Memphis and back toward Forest City in St. Francis County. What you're looking at is the radar beam being deflected back down toward the ground and detecting the traffic moving on I-40. That's what those areas of colors are just west of West Memphis and right around the Crowley's Ridge area. Uh, Doppler radar, the signal being able to detect how fast the traffic is moving, which is what it does during a thunderstorm when it detects tornadoes forming and telling which direction the, the winds and in this case the cars are moving on I-40. So kind of neat to be able to see that. Okay, we're also getting a good signal up into around uh, northeast Arkansas, south of Blytheville, that area right there around portions of I-55, south of Blytheville, down to around Marie and Kaiser. That's where we're seeing, again, the Doppler radar signal reflected and detecting the traffic out there. So that's pretty cool to be able to see something like that uh, in the morning hours for portions of the Mid-South. So that's where we're getting, again, a decent signal out there. Go ahead and switch back over to reflectivity and give us an idea if the to see if there's anything in the way of actual moisture taking place out there, which as of right now, not much of anything being detected anywhere across the Mid-South area. Looks like maybe some thicker amounts of moisture back over to around the Jonesboro area, but I don't think that's going to be developing into too much of anything at this time, so not really seeing too much of anything to report uh, in that location, so good news on that for right now. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of the forecast and show you more about what we're going to be taking a look at for the rest of the day today. Again, beautiful. Beautiful amounts of sunshine around the area when we're taking a look at Germantown from the Weatherbug camera on top of the tower from the City Hall camera system just north of Germantown High School and looking off toward Memphis. More of our Weatherbug cameras are available at wreg.com slash webcams if you'd like to see more about what goes on there. Also a great place to go to for more cameras is Weather Underground at wunderground.com and they got plenty of websites uh, in and around the Mid-South. Personal webcam stations available in certain parts of the Mid-South area including uh, in and around portions. There's a great one around Collierville. Uh, Tim B's webcam looks like it's a little bit on the... Uh not really seeing it show up just yet. Let's take a look out toward Collierville and see if Jet Jock's 3315's webcam. Blue skies, 67 degrees. Uh, great picture out in and around that area. So thanks a lot to everybody who has those webcams out there. I believe Rhodes College has theirs up and going. But uh, as of right now, it looks like it's been slightly delayed by a little bit. So that, when it gets up and going here in the next couple of hours, should be a good place to take a look at. Again, for more beautiful views across much of the area. Mostly these cameras that you see here are the 
uh, T-dot cameras around the loop system and into Arkansas, so you can see pretty clearly what's going on there. Getting into the rest of the day today, again, temperatures across the Mid-South are back into the mid to upper 60s to round about the lower 70s. Uh, again, not exactly all of what you would call cool, but it's about as cool as it gets for days like this, at least until that cool Canadian air decides to make its way on down this direction. Visibility at this time much improved over the last couple of hours. We've got four mile visibility reported at Tunica, four miles at Newport, Arkansas, six miles being reported at Dyersburg at the airport, and a little bit further back toward the Tennessee River, Lexington Parsons Beach River Regional at two mile visibility. But beyond that, there's really not that much going on. Back into the tropics, we've got a lot happening at this time. Visible satellite picture. Morning to everybody showing up on our Facebook page for this morning. Glad to have you along for the ride. And thanks to everybody who's uh, showing up for this morning on Twitter and Periscope for right now. So thanks to everybody for uh, watching there. Into the tropics, again, we have the area right in here. That is Maria, and it's actually a weaker hurricane than Lee is. Lee is a Category 2 storm, winds of about 100 miles per hour plus, uh, right about 100 miles per hour or so, but it's a lot smaller than Maria, but just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's not any more concentrated. So this storm is more dangerous than what Maria is. Maria is losing power as it gets into the colder waters. And as it does so, actually it's gonna be kind of interesting how this all plays out because as of right now, Maria still sending a lot of energy toward the East Coast states, the Outer Banks of the Carolinas. That's where we're seeing again, big swells, riptides, lots of winds, some showers, things like that. But Maria is going to be uh, degenerating into a tropical storm by tonight and it remaining a tropical storm. And then over the next couple of days is going to be catching a new wave of wind in the jet stream. It's going to be pushing this thing off to the east and it's going to be racing across the Atlantic. By this weekend, it's going to be halfway to Iceland. So it's not going to be a threat to us. And even from what it looks like, According to some of the computer models, this storm system could be hitting uh, the British Isles within about the week or so. So what's left of a Category 4, nearly a Category 5 storm, is going to be, again, across the Atlantic and not a threat to us. How about Lee? Well, Lee is about the same. My computer system would catch up with me here. Stop doing that. Okay, why are you doing that? There we go. Okay. Sorry, arguing with inanimate objects is not my favorite thing to do in the morning. Again, Lee, a hurricane up until about Friday, and then as it races with that same system across the Atlantic, will be making its way out and away from the United States, and that pretty much takes care of all the storm systems developing there. Nothing new developing in the tropics at this time, according to what we're uh, getting from the National Hurricane Center, so we'll be watching to see if and when we get anything new out there, but nothing being detected out into the Atlantic. A lot of dust coming in off of the Sahara, so that may be doing a good job of filtering out lots of sunshine there. Here in the Mid-South, we have little, if anything, going on. Hazardous weather outlook is very quiet, nothing expected over the next few days, even with that cold front coming on through, and it will be dropping into the Mid-South as we go into the next couple of days. As it does, it's going to be bumping up against high pressure, and that is going to be kind of slowing its progress. It's also going to be taking and pushing a lot of the moisture in the next couple of days way out into the south-central United States. So Texas, Anything around the Rio Grande, northern Mexico, the Four Corners area will be getting a lot more in the way of snow at this point. So that's where we'll be seeing most of the moisture. Doesn't look like anything for us hardly at all as of right now as this cold front approaches the area. Uh, Sasha and Madison, uh, when is hurricane weather going to be over? The season comes to an end as we go into around the area of December 1st. But again, because the oceans are starting to warm up a lot, we may see in the future longer hurricane season periods out there. But as of right now, these storms that you see here will be again uh, sticking around for the next few days. Hurricane season goes between June 1st and December 1st. And after that, that's when the oceans cool off enough to where we don't get storms like this. So we've got, again, another couple of months. We just passed the peak of hurricane season, the midway point, back around September 10th. So good question on that. Into the rest of the day today, again, temperatures looking like this. Not really much good news here. 
as we see temperatures throughout the rest of the day in the Mid-South going back into around the lower 90s. Chances of rainfall, eh, 1 out of 10 maybe at that for the Mid-South, so not much expected there. Lows tonight, upper 60s, except for the metro area. That nice heat island effect will be keeping us very much on the warm side. Wednesday's highs, again, pushing 90 degrees, nothing we haven't heard already. 10 to 15 percent chance of some rain, especially around that cold front area just back to our north and west. Low temperatures Wednesday night back in the upper 60s, pushing 70 degrees in some areas. By Thursday, the leading edge of some of that cooler air makes its way into the Mid-South area. And as it does, excuse me a second, I got a short key who needs my attention here. There you go. Thank you very much. All right. Now, temperatures, where were we? Okay, temperatures back into around the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s. That's the leading edge, <coughs> excuse me, of that cold front coming on through. And that, again, will be what we look at for the leading edge of that starting to get some cooler conditions into uh, the Mid-South area. Sasha Ann Madison. Sasha, hope I'm saying that right. A lot of family in Florida. North Carolina trips to be taking everyone traveling to visit be safe either way. Absolutely. Keep track of what's going on with the uh, current idea of weather, <clears throat> excuse me again, and the tri allergies are really kicking me for this time around. National Hurricane Center is going to be one of the best places you can go to to keep up on information that what is happening in and around the Atlantic. So this right here is going to be something that you should really be keeping track of, especially at this time of the year. All right, now getting into the next couple of days, toward about Friday, high temperatures much more pleasant in the upper 70s to just below 80 degrees. Likewise, for the weekend, it looks absolutely excellent. Upper 70s for Saturday and went too far. Go back to Sunday. Temperatures again in the mid to upper 70s. So a beautiful autumn-like weekend uh, is where we see that coming on through. So, okay, Sasha, thank, thank you very much on that pronunciation. You figured with a name like Onik, I would know better about pronouncing things like that. If you'd like to know more about severe weather, now is the time. The National Weather Service has expanded their Skywarn spotter training schedules. It used to be just in the springtime and late winter. Now they're doing them in late uh, summer and early fall to make certain everybody is ready to go for the second severe weather season, which is going to be happening between late October and early December. Don't believe me about that? Ask people around Collierville who got hit by the tornado where Houston High School is located, and that happened about 20, 25 years ago in and around either Thanksgiving or Christmas. So they can happen at that time of the year, and now's the time to get ready for it. So if you live in and around Oxford, this is your opportunity to attend tonight at uh, 6.30 p.m. at the Lafayette County Fire Department Central Station, 50 County Road 30, 1032 in Oxford, Mississippi. Contact information with Lafayette County Communications is Steve Quarles, his phone number and email address here if you have any questions. Thursday, the 28th of September, Quitman County in Mississippi at Mark's Community House, 200 Pecan or Pecan Street, depending on how you pronounce that. Uh, that'll be held again this Thursday and many more of them coming up over the next few days. You show up, you take the course, it's totally free. It's an opportunity for you to learn what needs to be done to look for severe weather, what to report back to the National Weather Service how to stay safe during severe weather. It's a very good course for kids. A lot of kids that I have met before, including that have, some have been referred to me by uh, professional counselors and psychologists asking kids who have had a traumatic experience, what can they do to not be afraid of the weather? This is what I would recommend as a course because it gives you and them the opportunity to get some control over what feels like to them, especially an uncontrollable situation. If you know what to look for, if you're prepared ahead of time, that is going to reduce the opportunity to be scared about things because you're going to be prepared for things and not scared. So this is a good opportunity to learn more about this. We'll be posting more about this throughout the rest of the day. How do you get here to find this information? Simple. You go to the National Weather Service website at weather.gov, weather scroll down to the map, click on the Mid-South area, right about Memphis, Shelby County in that area, East Arkansas, West Tennessee, North Mississippi. You then scroll up to the headlines at the top of the page where it says become a storm spotter. Click on that. 
boom, there you go. All the information that you could hope to want, all the contact details. There is not one for Memphis and Shelby County as of right now, but again, it'll be happening. That meeting will happen in the late winter, early spring. But if you'd like the National Weather Service to come to your uh, organization or your business or your place of worship, that's something to consider. Give them a call and contact them. The information is down at the bottom of this screen. Coming up tonight at about 7.33, a major bright pass of the International Space Station. It'll be going almost right across the sky, rising in the southwest at about 7.33, and going all the way across the sky to the northeast through Cassiopeia, right past the bright star Vega in, or in the constellation of Lyra, and it should be a very good viewing. Again, that'll be tonight at about 7.33 in the southwest. Look for a bright, fairly fast-moving point of light, but not fast, fast like a shooting star. We'll be posting more about this and tons of other weather information on my Facebook page if you'd like to know more about that. It's also Banned Books Week. Good opportunity for you to learn more about fighting censorship and freedom of expression. And that's all available at facebook.com slash AustinAonicWREG. Join me on my Twitter page. For those of you who are not there already, twitter.com slash Aonic underscore WREG3. And it looks like uh, my my Periscope feed is a little bit frozen, but you can get more information about uh, what that looks like here if you'd like to stop in and find out more about what's going on and follow the broadcast on Periscope if you'd like to get more details there. Very slow connection this morning. I'm not too sure why that is at this point, so sorry about that going on. Okay, cool. I think we're back up and working. So anyway, oh, cool. Look, it's me watching me watching me. That's neat. Anyway, if you'd like to know more, you can find out more about the forecast by going to AM730. We're live on the air with them with forecast information throughout the rest of the 8 o'clock hour. So stay tuned for more with Bob and Josh coming up in just a little bit. And also Todd Demers has your forecast through News Channel 3 at noon and all the details as well at wrhe.com slash weather. Live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us and keep tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online for the latest weather information.